wish I had a bus story this week. I really wish I did. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. The only stories I have is that how is how terrifying Las Vegas is to walk uh to work in at, mm. at four thirty five o'clock. Right. It's fucking uh, scary. Yeah, yeah that's, well that's, that's like a... how many prostitutes with shivs do you see? None. It's it's the it's you're you're too far in the one direction. It's mostly like oh. It is lots and lots of homeless people in like these permanent camp areas that you see mm. every single day, and just Poor like work, weird huh? and like you're like you're going to work, but like there's some people you see you're like, what are you doing out? At this time of night? It, in my head, it's a little bit Jacob's Ladder and a little bit Mulholland Drive. That's a Jacob's that... Ladder is a good way to describe it because like anybody you see <laughs> coming down the road at you, you're like, okay, I'm going to work. Um. You don't look like you're going anywhere in particular. So what the fuck are you doing? It's like when you see them like barely lit in the sidewalk, you're like, Ngh. I'd like to point one out... guy every day. It's a he's this tall black dude. And he's got this fucking like it's a it's a pimp cane. Like it is a nice ass cane from what I've seen. But every time I see him, he's coming at me. And like we've never had a crossword. But every time he sees me coming at me or coming uh, coming towards me, like. He gets all the way off the sidewalk and walks in the street around me and then gets back on the sidewalk. I'm like, damn, I don't Wait, know. I mean, you're the dangerous about one. you doing that every single time we cross paths. Well, What's the guardian I, spirit of that block? I hate to point it out, but I, white people haven't exactly been all that. Green. Yeah, and I, I thought about that too. I'm like, it could be just me. It could be just this weirdo in medical scrubs at 4:30 in the morning, a Dragon yeah. Ball hat, like. Yeah, like... exactly. Yeah. And I'd also like to point <laughs> out how fucking cl- nuts it just goes around me. I'd like to point out how classist it is to assume that these homeless people can't be prostitutes. Mm. I don't. Th- well, I mean, I. It's Vegas. Like, I think the standards yeah. are higher than what I'm seeing. Yeah. Well, they're higher and lower. Well, they, more they, they, don't, they don't clock into, like, they're more so, like... <laughs> no, it's just fucking, like, it's, it's, it's creepy and sad at the same time, because, like, you walk by what's essentially a prone body, um, but then you mm. realize, like, they're just... It's just this, like... It's this mini encampment that's been, like, sucked into one very tiny space until they wake up and start moving around. Like, until then, oh, like, God, their right. whole fucking life is in this, like, just this tight-ass, like, bundle. It's like a cocoon. Mm. Um, oh, there is one guy who walks around with, like, more fucking just shit than I've seen anybody in this city tote around. And, like, he'll stop, just, full, like, stop doing everything and just start screaming into the air about whatever the fuck. Like, I think I might have told the story before, but like I was walking to work and I see him across the street from the bus stop and like he's talking about the government and then he sees me, see him and he goes, I don't know you. I don't know you at all. But I got a problem with you. And then just keeps going. <laughs> mm. I was like, oh, shit. Like, come on, dude. There's four lanes of traffic between us. Can you leave me alone? <laughs> I just back to something you said earlier about being creepy and sad and creepy and sad is the only way I can finish. So I guess I'm oh, God. Vegas. Oh, oh God. I was almost, my body was almost ready for that comment. So like, I didn't have any reaction this time. Yeah. Uh, well, anyways, uh, what did you use to heat the water, Connor? Did you use a microwave? Did you use a stove? Did you no, use, uh, it's still weird that you told me that in the chat. Also, did uh, the screaming guy uh, who was yelling about the government, was he also screaming about the tablet? <laughs> have you heard of it the tablet knows all the tablet brings you peace probably wrote the fucking tablet for all see i like this idea that like we're getting this just like weekly monthly whatever amount of time it is in between shows like information and story that's slowly spreading that like this tablet is actually this nefarious <laughs> item that's infecting people's minds it's and, the like, relic each, yeah, each I, time, i'm like, amused Connor's by how many people us, have I'm amused by how many people have just messaged me like, "Hey, dude, have you heard of the tablet?" Like, it's it's, it's only a few, but still, it's more than I ever expected. <laughs> well, I, just, I, I like the idea that this thing is like slowly and insidiously like taking over the denizens of Las Vegas, and like we're gonna go to record some night, and Connor is just gonna be like, "Yeah, that's really great, but uh, did you have you heard of the, the tablet?" tablet? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're getting a radio play about the destruction of Las Vegas by an alien tablet. It's one oh, yeah. of the worlds. Tom Cruise is there. Not through my boring ass perspective. Dakota Fanning, I think she was in that movie. Fucking clueless yeah, the whole yeah. time too. Like, man, this is just everyone keeps up with this fucking tablet. 
You see, it wasn't <laughs> one exactly tablet. It was a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it was when three or four people have tablets. <laughs> it's it's still just the tablet. It's just yeah. it's a hive mind. Right. It spreads. Yeah. Yeah. The tablet. You don't have a tablet. Have you heard of the tablet? What? Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, there's one in his hand. Uh, I'm, sh- I'm just Shaun of the Deading through an alien invasion, just walking <laughs> through it, just completely unattended. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So, what's everybody been watching recently? Uh. Man, I haven't watched shit because I really haven't had time to do anything. I've been playing um, No Man's Sky. I picked up Hellblade again for the Xbox One S. And Jesus, first of all, it comes with like uh, extra graphic settings. Like one is high resolution, the other Mm -hmm. one is like high performance, and the other one is like uh, uh, frame rate. I was like, I don't know which one to pick. It all it's all gonna look so good. (laughs) I I'd say go frame rate frame rate always Honestly, looks I went stunning. for resolution and that doesn't like it doesn't really hurt the experience but like man it makes everything in that game fucking pop um, yeah. uh, and yeah No Man's Sky I've been uh, getting a little inebriated and jumping into that and that's a fucking good time waster <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe I definitely the last two days that I've been playing and I've noticed like, oh, hey, it's like 630 already shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, like started at like 430 and like all of a sudden two hours have just disappeared and I've accomplished nothing. You play yeah, no, I, I barely ever accomplished anything. The most I'll do is like set up a base somewhere and be like, just kind of be like whoever finds this, it's yours. And then zip off to the next planet and decide if I want to put something there or go find something like I found a paradise planet. I found um, an abandoned system. Like the space station was completely abandoned, and every planet I went to was considered lifeless. Except for these weird ass plants, I was like, "This is a good sign that I should leave uh, and never come back to this place." <laughs> or you should have just become a god emperor. Of yeah, you, nothing. you could have just this is my mm-hmm. empire of weird, you could have been doing plants. Yeah, you could have been doing. Yeah. Find yourself to these little worm things that, uh, yeah, for yeah, yeah exactly. sound trap. You can be a yeah. tiny little emperor. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So should I wait yeah. for a robot with my likeness to come down to this planet that I've declared myself yes. the leader of, and then have a weird, uh, you know, moment with him involving a flute through space oh, yeah, jihad? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're no, we're it's... we're we're mushing a lot of things together here, but I'm okay with it. I'm... <laughs> No, what's gonna happen is this robot version I'll be played of you by Michael Fassbender. It'll be fine. Is gonna is gonna come down and offer you the tablet. Um, Fuck exactly. <laughs> I for me, I just finished watching uh, the Wailing tonight, and uh, oh yeah, oh wow, okay, yeah, That's it's it's a movie. You know, have you seen it, Hunter? Nope. <laughs> okay, Hunter, um, you need to see it. Um, uh, you really you know, do. It, it's, it's less like of a, a horror film and more like a. I mean, it is a I mean, horror film. Like, there's weird is. shit happening, but like, it's so quiet. Like, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's bitch quiet. It's so quiet. It's like I like I'd said in the uh, in the Discord chat real quick was like, I enjoyed it, and I feel like it was a little bit overly long. Not that any of the scenes weren't necessary, but just some of them got drug on a little mm-hmm. bit longer than necessary. Like, I don't yeah. know. It 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 was good and there was a great story there but it's also just like oh god it's just two and a half hours i i will say south korean like this this genre of like i I call it south korean misery horror because like it is just like and it's weird because like sometimes there's action scenes too like i would consider Mm -hmm. like this form of misery horror um and that has like several action scenes and like so i said that like i saw the devil Mm -hmm. this way and like these movies they hit a certain point of like awkwardness that usually involves something either graphic or just uncomfortable and you're like this yeah. movie is two and a half hours long and I have to sit <laughs> here and endure this until it's yeah, over it's fucking not... captivating and it's bothering me yeah and they're not like chill movies like no at all you know there are plenty of like three hour movies that have dark subject matter that I watch frequently too too frequently to be honest i watched zodiac more times than any human should um well, zodiac I fucking rule, really okay <laughs> i'm not all out um but like yeah these movies are they're bleak to to say the least and eric i think that's that's specifically a thing with that director because you had also yeah. watched um uh is it the medium the medium which is i i liked that one more um yeah. Because of like the specific um, cultural stuff that it was dealing with, like 
the Buddhist concept of demons was a really mm-hmm. cool thing to explore. And like for them, a demon is like a bunch of spirits that have all turned rotten together. Mm-hmm. And they've like, hate when that happens. And they've like nodded up into one another, basically, like a, and become this like demon. Um, really, yeah. Yeah. Um and that was so creepy and the way that it was done was so creepy and it's much it's much more like a typical horror where I think that um I, th- I think the other movie is a bit more it's a bit more of like a morality play. Um the theme or the wailing? The wailing. Yeah, the wailing. The wailing yeah, yeah cuz like there's a weird like cuz on top of this like weird supernatural goings on which I still I still think is rather nebulous. Um uh, mm-hmm. There's this weird like uh, they lean into the this idea of like don't shun an outsider and like just yeah. assume that who they are based on where they're from or what their intentions are because mm-hmm. like there's like two or three misdirects about like what's going on with this village and they keep pointing you towards like a Japanese guy or is it someone else like is it this woman is it some, it's, yeah. you know, try to, they they they're playing to people's prejudices the whole time. Yeah, and that's I was kind of expecting that to be a bit more heavy handed, but it actually was handled much better than I expected. Like it, it mm-hmm. at, in the sense that like it, it basically told you what it meant, and then just like let it continue to be what it was. Like it, it yeah. didn't continue to try and hammer that point into you the whole time. So it was okay, cool. You you appeared briefly, and obviously let us know that this was part of your thesis. So cool, thanks for that. And they but, established that that dude's dangerous right away because like doesn't someone mm-hmm. stumble upon him just doing whatever and he just murders that guy? He was uh he was eating a like deer raw. Yeah. yeah. And uh yeah, and then he crawls at him with his big red eyes and and the camera cuts right before he bites him. But yeah, 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 that that happened to one or two people. And then the uh which that was the weird thing with the movie too is the beginning of it they made like the the protagonist seem like oh he's a bumbling cop and then all of a sudden he turned into like serious dad who's who's screaming or crying most of the movie yeah uh, i i was watching i think arlen i think you've seen the same video um it was a guy who talked mm. about how like south korean horror films paint the police in a very very poor light all the time <laughs> yeah like yeah. they have a very yeah. low opinion a cab. it seems. They, they, Not I, even I, that hunter. Like, yeah. like they paint them as like these fucking like buffoons who are incapable mm-hmm. of doing their jobs. Wow. Well, it's a, it's it's definitely more of a common like if our tropes about cops in this country are more about like they're all kind of crappy, but there's one good one, you know, or there's the few that, you know, they try, but they're they're all drunks or they're all, you know, like super tragic in some way. In Korea, they're just all like kind of sad. They're non-motivated sad sacks who are usually mm-hmm. cowardly and have no like they have no um like they have no forward thinking. Um mm-hmm. they don't act, they tend to run away, and they're always smoking a cigarette and crouching on the ground. Like they always look like <laughs> very oh, pathetic yeah. looking dudes. Like and they're like smoking the... a cigarette to fucking filter, like Yeah. Like <laughs> the <laughs> all in one hit. The, yes. the best in quotes, the best depiction of cops, I would say, is the movie um uh Memoirs of a Murder. Um, yes. That's got the actor from um fuck. Uh the host and uh yeah. Uh, uh, Snowpiercer in it, yeah, and, and 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 best is very like nebulous, like because he he doesn't give up on the murder that he's doing even after he retires. Like that's that's about as close to being best as he as I can think of. Like the he's motivated I, to solve it. I saw um, one that has similar title. It was called Memory of Murder, I think, and it's a South Korean thriller, but mm. it's about a. A serial killer who comes out and confesses to, and I guess is a real thing in South Korea, confesses mm. to a bunch of serial murders after the, um, fuck, what am I trying to Statue think of, of here? Limitations. Statue of Limitations is lifted, and he just confesses and oh, writes yeah. a tell-all book and becomes a celebrity. And the cop mm. who was hunting him for years is like, you motherfucker. Um, and yeah. tries to defame him the entire time. And um, that's probably another decent depiction of the police I've seen, but like, probably. yeah, like... In the horror mm. films I've seen, they're all the same. Like they're very sad yeah. people who can't do their jobs. 
Mm-hmm. Also, I, uh, the host, I have to assume I mean, it's mostly host, a trope because yeah. Yeah. I mean the host yeah. also didn't really think kindly of the fucking of, of the well, it, no. well it, yeah, didn't, no. it doesn't think kindly of yeah any administrative people governments no, yeah. whatsoever. everyone in that movie who's who's got who's in charge of something is a fucking moron that is truly mm-hmm. a movie about society yes because yeah. we live in yeah. one because we, we live give you a car yes we do. You? we do uh, we do we yes. do Yes. I mean, on this topic, there's a movie called, um, uh, I think it's The Cop, The Gangster, and The Devil. Or it, it might be. Really? I there. like that. Are they, they, are they walking into a bar? Hell yeah. <laughs> I wish. But it's about, um, it's actually, it's also based off of a true story. And it's about this gangster who almost gets killed by a serial killer. And afterwards, after he survives, he's like, fuck this. I'm going to find the serial killer. Um Whoa. It's pretty great. Um, Damn. <laughs> it's, sounds... it's pretty great. And then he it teams turns up into, with the cops. Um, it turns into the Korean this... version of a Yakuza game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Basically. It, 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 it's it's like, the closest thing I can come to that kind of vibe is like the, like the latter half of I Saw the Devil is like just like exhilarating because like that's when the killer mm-hmm. is like, no, I'm going to chase you now. Like after, because I don't know if, who's seen that movie here. I have. I saw it years ago. I have yeah, seen I, it. Man. I've been putting it off. I should get oh, to it. Oh my fucking god! So basically, it's about a a serial killer who murders the wife of a special ops South Korean guy, yeah. or something like oh, he's like a secret agent. He's and like so, yeah, he's like wasn't he like Secret Service or something? He was like, like Secret that? Service. Yeah, he, like he worked for like he was security for government people. And so yeah. the serial killer gets his wife, and then he devotes all of his fucking like double O resources to finding this guy, tracking him down. He beats him within an inch of his life and goes. You know what? It's way more fun to stick a tracker up your nose, find you again, beat the piss out of you, drive away, find you again, beat the piss out of you, and then drive away and do the whole thing over and over again. That's um, actually amazing. I, I then, wish. Well, then the, serial, <laughs> then the serial killer spins and starts tracking him and starts finding out his information, so he's going after his family, and like it's this insane back and forth between them until the end it's it's it's, it's a it's a battle of escalations because yeah. i mean what the what the cop ends up doing at the end you're just like oh man oh okay. it's, it's yeah you're like yeah don't i mean yeah. yay did you win because i don't feel very good <laughs> yeah yeah it's great though it's really it good is fucking rotten what he does at the end to be honest <laughs> so uh hunter what have you been watching or have you just been terrorizing the people well, so the city i've been your, uh, i've been doing two things technolabia Wait, what? No. <laughs> Me? Never. Uh, um, I'm a I'm a good Christian boy. Yeah. Um I've been I I, I silently watched all community in like four days of what you silently you just sat there with no emotion Yeah, no, it was it too. was more like a thing of like I'm just I guess I'm doing this now. Uh, and it was awesome, and I love that. I think that's like my favorite show of all time. If I had to pick one, that that is an amazing television show. I, I it's not because I'm being uh, counter or whatever. I'm it's because I'm being control. It's I've I've only watched like half of the first episode, and then I never went back to oh, it. I don't know so why. Good. I don't know why. So I've never uh, gotten around to it. Um, and you're all in all of this. Uh, for the same reason I've never watched Breaking Bad, um, because it's one of my brother's favorite shows. I can't oh. believe you've never seen Breaking Bad. <laughs> what a petty reason! I'm I fucking forgetting that you keep you, you said that every once in a while, and like I'm I'm just like, well, I don't know if I've explained this to you right now. <laughs> I I don't know if I've explained this other half about this. When my brother really likes something, this brother in particular, he will torture you until you watch it. And my only recourse is to go scorched earth the other direction. Um, <laughs> so what you're saying is he can't know you've ever seen it, basically. Yeah. Yes, exactly. He can't wow. ever learn that I've seen it. No, he knows that I'm going to watch Breaking Bad because I'm going to after Better Call Saul ends. Um, oh, okay. oh, in like not? five years. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wait, it no, was, isn't it on final season? I think it is, but it might keep on going because they've said they've been on their final season like three years in a row. So <laughs> it's still on. Like I can't. Yeah. I, I'm it's, more I've heard. Around. I've heard it's, good things. I just don't really care. Good. It's gotten yeah. better every season, so I understand why it's still on the air. I'm just. I'm. I'm impressed and you know very satisfied that like Breaking Bad ended and has continued to do well. Like with 
mm-hmm. uh, what's it called? What, oh, what the fuck was the movie on Netflix? Um, oh, El Camino. El Camino? El Camino. Man, El Camino was good. Um, and then, yeah, with like what I've seen from Better Call Saul, I like, and the fact that it's going on, like, how many seasons? You said five? How many seasons? I think it's going to enter six. Fuck I don't know. Hey, man. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Shit. But yeah, but it's, it's really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'm sure it is. Yeah. So cyberpunk, what are you what are you thinking now that you've stepped back uh, into that world? So, oh, I, think I have on this. I have extremely complex feelings of cyberpunk. Like I I genuinely really like parts of this game. I think it's mm-hmm. cool. It's cool to just look at. Like there's some mm-hmm. there's something interesting that catches your eye every time you move. I, yeah, I mean, you were on, on PC, but I was on. I, the first time I touched that, memory was on the other consoles. And the, it was on the, the and console. it was unplayable. And it was I was so distracted by how garbage that game looked. I couldn't take anything in, and how the, how it fucking chugged, and there was texture pop in, and like I mean, the driving is still the drizzling shits. Oh, it's awful. The driving yeah, is well, terrible. Like, the worst. But like, well, that's it's that's amazing the... to get a look at this game now and go like, whoa. That's on the creators of the game not outright saying like don't play this on the Xbox One, like yeah. it, they they should have never had to put it on the Xbox One it, or the PS4. It, they should honestly they should have delayed it for Xbox. That's it, what it should have. The happened. only other experience yeah. I've had like that was I played, and I had like I, there was no way for me to know this because like I was going from it was the end of the 360 era, and I played Dragon Age Inquisition on the 360, like without warning. And it's it is abysmal. Like people's beards wouldn't load, or they would load well before the model would. So you'd have these like bald yep. faces floating around with no textures yet, and then like eyes, nose, mouth, and then a beard, or just a beard and then a whole body. My um, favorite is the depots, the deposing <laughs> models just floating around. Yeah, it's yeah, so it was funny. A, I couldn't believe someone said yes to it. Like it performed so fucking badly. I I never had any of the T posing on uh, Cyberpunk, but I also I was playing it on a One X, so I did. Yeah, you probably had a bet a, a slightly better experience. Probably not perfect. I, no, I did though. Like I actually I like you said. Like I really enjoyed looking at it and like and I'll finish my thought real quick and then we can get back to what you were saying about it. But um, it's one of those things that like whenever I go in to play it again, I'm like, oh, this is fun. Oh, these weapons look cool. Oh, I'm bored. Like yeah. within like two two to five minutes of me playing, it's just like uh, the no, threshold this is to gonna keep get me better. in that game is low. Yeah. It's it is a very hollow experience, I'd call it, because like yeah. it's it feels like uh, L A and R had the similar problem for me, where it's like yes. you're just driving around and going from place if to you place, aren't doing the big gimmick. Like if you aren't doing the story in Cyber, well, no, actually, I would say if you if you're at a certain point in that game and you decide to fuck off in the story and just go run around, I would argued have more fun but being strapped to the yeah. story in cyberpunk to me is the most boring part about the fucking game because like i do i do however i do like this time this playthrough i'm enjoying the story a little more um uh, it it's more, definitely i think it's like it's like even when i got to silverhand i was like man i am just like stuck doing such like like I'm doing like fetch quests, or I'm going to look at a thing, or I'm going to talk to a person. Yeah. I'm fucking bored. I need to do something. Like the Arasaka book, first time that story where it pops up and comes alive, where I'm like, I'm finally having some fucking fun. Uh, it, it's it's just like it's a thing of like I think they have something cool here, and they could make. I feel like if they ever make a sequel, and I have a <laughs> feeling eventually it will happen, because like they got to recoup that money somehow. I guess. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Um, they could re- they could really improve upon this. But like right now, it's like this is like you made a really cool world with a really cool IP, and there's nothing for me to do in the world except do the story. Well, it's I I think part of my problem with like when I've jumped back in is that every time I feel like oh you know I'm doing this big thing and I should be able to get something better, I'm like oh that that weapon isn't really any better. Like, oh, those those pants aren't better than the ones I have here. Like, I feel like I'm not being rewarded even for doing stuff that's like a little bit tougher for my character. I mean, it could be just because I'm bad at the game again because I haven't played it in forever. Yeah. But but it's just I don't know. There doesn't feel like any type of like, oh, you did a good job. Here's a cookie. It's yeah. just like, hey, thanks. 
and then they just kind of walk off. Like it just it I don't know. It it doesn't have that that cycle that makes me want to keep going with it. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm gonna try and finish it uh before Elden Ring comes out because <laughs> I need to clear everything before that even drops. Yeah, yeah. I'm also trying I'm trying to get uh Kate in Avengers up to the power level one forty or one fifty before Elden Ring comes out. i she's the only one well, her and Hulk I have left. And like yeah. I was actually playing that earlier today and I'm just, I'm just like why have I played this game so much? And then I'm kind of leaning back and looking at it. And I was like, I think it's also because I'm really good at it. So I just go back to it all the time. Cause I was watching just like, I had like videos and shit and I'm just kind of looking at what I'm doing. I'm like, I have trivialized everything in this game. Cause I played it so fucking much. Yeah. It, I don't know. I, I feel like it's kind of fun because like I'll jump in his Hawkeye who I maxed out. I'm like, God, he is busted. Um, I was playing online and like just the way you can play with other people was really fucking fun, especially with maxed out characters. It's like four demigods running through everything. I, yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm at a point where I'm trying to just tear through uh, Far Cry Six because I, just... I, I played a bunch of Far Cry Six. I, I'm out of. I do not like that game. <laughs> I'm just doing Go it out of malaria. I'm. <laughs> Uh, no. I wish, dude. I'm, I kind of wish. <laughs> I'm I'm just doing it out of obligation at this point because I bought that game for like three five bucks, and I'm like, all right, yeah. I should just beat it. All right, just get it done with. It's just like talking about Valhalla. I'm like, oh mm. man. <laughs> I I, 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 I will play Valhalla gladly over yes. Far Cry Six any day. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Actually, becoming, like, I'm having a great, great time just... with Wordle. Um, Wordle uh, yeah, really... Wordle. <laughs> Have you been playing Loodle, the the dirty version of Wordle? That one, that one is so much no. tougher. That's so much tougher than Wordle. I bet it's it ridiculous. is. That would, that would involve lingo I probably don't even know. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, it's, it's gonna uh, have so, it's gonna have so many words for vagina we didn't even know existed. Yeah, exactly. Too old exactly. Play shit. <laughs> so, uh, Arlen, what have you watched anything of interest recently other than not watching um, Breaking Bad? I think the, the thing that will be the most interesting to bring up on here um, uh, is a. Uh, I watched the newest, um, the newest wrong turn. Um, oh what? my god! Why? Why are you dead yourself? <laughs> are you okay? Did you, having... did you lose a bet? <laughs> no. Um, also, I had never seen you any said that of the in previous a very questionable way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never seen any of the previous wrong turn films. Um, which is good because I don't think this one has anything to it's, do with those movies. This um, one doesn't have the weird mutants in it. I know that. No, right? no. So, do you guys care if I spoil? Wrong I don't. Give I don't give a spoil no, actual please, shit no. about the, the seventeen no. long turn movie. Oh no! <laughs> it's and apparently it's only and the I'm, seven. And you know what? And if you're listening to this, all nineteen of you, I'm speaking for you too. You don't care either. I don't want to hear it. So, so um, it's it's the same setup as the other wrong turns. I think no. um, <laughs> it's a sure a bunch that? of a bunch of college college kids. They're hiking through the Appalachian Trail. Uh, they run into traps and stuff, and and so on and so forth. Um, Jigsaw's back. Just... That's the twist. <laughs> but no, <laughs> no. So. Th- the twist is um, it's Eliza Dushku uh, doing it. Uh, I wish <laughs> that would be so good if it was just an inversion of all these uh these legacy horrors. Um, but no, it's um, and I actually think this is kind of interesting. The twist is that it's a it's like a um, it's like a southern version of um. Not pilgrims. What are they called, Eric? You, there's a lot of them in Pennsylvania. Amish. Yeah, you were one. Of, oh, Amish. I was about to say uh, you're one of the pilgrims, right? When you came over here on the. <laughs> oh, no, I was they're, they're, here when they came. <laughs> the fuck they're, 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 here? they're like a weird breakaway um, cult, Amish sex? kind of. Uh, well, not quite Amish because they're the reason that they broke away from society is because they were abolitionists. Um, oh, oh. like extreme abolitionists um, who believed that like the Civil War was going to end America like they thought it was going to be an apocalypse um, 
So they broke away and they've formed their own little like mountain community that is very like integrated and, you know, multi-ethnic and stuff. And the point of the first half of the movie is that these college kids go out there and they start getting, you know, killed by like hunting traps. Um, and they assume that it's like the, you know, the, the country bumpkin people that they met in town that are like hunting them down. Um, but the people that they meet, they're like, this is all just a misunderstanding. Um, you attacked us. We were bringing your friend to get help. Um, so it's like this weird reversal thing where you think that it's, you know, inbred mutants, but it's actually not. Um, so and, it's a, an I am legend-esque turn. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different take. I mean, they still depict this cult as being a cult. Um, <laughs> so they're not altogether, like, great either. Um, and they were, like, you know deer heads and bear heads and stuff and oh it's my like god it's the wendell from fucking 13th warriors what you're telling me like <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it's like no wonder they were scared of you you look like a monster you you look, look like a ghoul. Like hellblade <laughs> exactly um and of course there's at at, cer at a certain point it's like they're a little bit cruel to people that wander in anybody basically that wanders out into their territory they they murder um, just because they're oh. fiercely protected. That doesn't seem like a misunderstanding. That seems like a very clear. <laughs> that just seems like crime. Yeah. yeah. So like it's it's a weird movie where it like the first half tries to like 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 slap the audience for <laughs> for 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 expecting one thing um, and like talk down to you a little bit, um, and then the second half is like this um, weird family drama thing um because uh we f begin to follow matthew modine um oh as the father God. of to, one of the college see, students glad to see his career um, doing great <laughs> hey, yeah we're talking about aaron eckhart but like why didn't the dark knight rub do anything for that guy what the fuck i don't know man uh, i don't know or, or anthony michael hall and uh, he uh, comes back to save the one survivor because they all they don't all die. But like two of them get their eyes burned out. Nice. Um, oh. <laughs> and they're locked in a uh, essentially a dark pit cave hallway um, uh, forever to. And they're it's called the punishment of uh, darkness or whatever. So they um, and it becomes it just becomes a very interesting, weird thriller movie in the back half that I wasn't expecting. Um, I don't know. It's it's a weird movie. I would actually, I wouldn't suggest people watch it. Um, but like, I guess look up clips of the movie. There are parts of it that are really well acted. Um, and then I actually really like the way that the movie ends. Um, it does some interesting filmmaking stuff where the character, the, the lead uh, female character and the dad, they make it out um, and they settle back into like their lives um, or their lives that they would have had before. Um, and they're starting to build a family. And then the people from the foundation, which is the name of the cult, they track them down <clears throat> um, because she is pregnant with uh, a, a child of the leader from the leader of the foundation. Um, oh, so there's rape involved too. Okay, yeah, these, cool, cool, these guys, cool, cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the, yeah. Everything you said about them earlier, no, <laughs> like, no. Nope, so right? that's the thing. They're awful, but not in the way that you were thinking, right? They're not inbred hicks. They're just um, uh, they're a variation of that. Stupid. Yeah. Well, they're just, they're hicks, but they're not inbred, right? They're like yeah. woods Scientologists. They're like... <laughs> Forest Scientologists? Ah, uh, at last, it oh. sound worse. Oh, so they're Nexium. Okay, got it. Right. <laughs> Well, Got no, they're it. like hard. They're they're pilgrim Scientologists, really. That's what they weird, are. It's kind of a weird hostel uh, ending because yeah, hostel. Well, no, hostel two is the 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 super fucking bummer opening that completely uh, undoes mm. the ending of the first movie. Um, for those that give yeah. a shit, hostel two opens with Jay Hernandez in the first movie being decapitated in his kitchen. Uh, oh, it's, wow. that's a really I knew that. I don't know how I knew that, but I knew that. Man, it's, <laughs> it, 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 
bums you the fuck out because like i'm sorry because like you should want to see at least someone come out of that fucking horror show that he paints in the first movie like uh, yeah if i remember i only saw the well no i saw both hostels but it many many years ago but i don't remember anybody from the first movie the quote-unquote protagonist being decent people so he's the know. least worst of the three like and <laughs> well that's yeah i mean i i seem to remember them being super excited about the idea of fucking a foreign girl and it's just like yeah you guys are gross yeah they're american pie protagonists essentially yeah okay mm-hmm. oh okay yeah. then yeah well, fuck him he deserves to die then i don't know um, I, well, so I, 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 I think compared to what what was going on i'm like no god please get the fuck out of here like <laughs> get that poor girl who had her eye melted oh she jumped in front of a train um <sighs> Yeah. Yeah, that, the second movie has weird. the best ending of any of those fucking movies though because that one girl the girl who's like involved and in, she gets like she gets she's the one who gets she's getting victimized by this like fucking like uh american business a businessman um she buys out his contract on her because her dad is wealthy as shit um and then she cuts off his balls and feeds them to a rottweiler and the movie ends what <laughs> hmm it, it just, oh no! It, it ends with her getting to murder the person who set her up in public without any repercussions because they, the whoever this the bloodhound hunting group whoever the fuck it is like owns the city basically. Yeah, it just it, yeah. it those movies feel like Eli Roth just trying to be the horror nerd he is and and just overdo it. I saw yeah, the mean Eli Lance. Roth. You, he, he, yeah, he's exactly. being Eli Roth. He's, they're very try just, hard, and I think yeah, the first two yeah. were entertaining, but beyond that, I mean, don't bother. I think that's part of the that's part of the Eli Roth thing, though. I think that him being like associated with Tarantino meant that he he had to be like he had to like push boundaries or whatever. And it's like yeah. most interesting stuff that has come from him, either as an actor or director, has been the stuff where it's just like him doing normal stuff, like him him doing not extreme except for that death wish movie which i i believe that was still him i don't remember if he actually made that or not um no it came out (laughs) it did come out it It did happen i forgot about that movie until right now but like like uh, like it was gone from my mind right right now no until i was starting to say the words out loud i forgot that it existed (laughs) But like the house of the clock in its wall, it's not like an amazing movie, but like it's a you know silly kind of kids movie. Um, pretty good. Um, I like the first Cabin Fever, and mm. I saw the movie he did called Aftershock, which is like it's his it's his gore porn that he does, but in like a disaster movie. Yeah. I mean that works though. I, I mean I haven't seen it, but I, that's the kind of thing that I think would work. Actually, it's fine. Or, like he he does yeah. like. Like he he picks his fucking battles appropriately. Like there's a, a bunch of people going to like a lift to get out of the fucking ravine. Oh, it's like a it's an earthquake and a tsunami. Um, oh. and like a bunch of people go up this big lift, and of course the lift crashes back down after the earthquake, and they're all smashed to pieces. Um, but Connor is the moon involved? At any yeah, is point? is no. there an alien? But that... Eli Roth himself is in the movie, in the and he gets crushed by debris, and it has an extended ridiculous death scene. <laughs> Okay, but, but but back back to the aliens. Is there on the moon? So there's a wizard hut on the moon, as we all know. And, and the moon is also a hologram created by the Nazis. So like, where does that fall in to this? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, not it's a conundrum me. because also, the hut could not exist if the so moon 9/11. was a hologram. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was a it was a oh, crime perpetrated by Rottweiler. So Eli Roth did 9/11. Needs. He he. I'm yeah. so I'm so lost right now. <laughs> Eli yeah, Roth did was actually really. just a Eli Roth Rottweiler. was an inglorious 9/11. Um, <clears throat> it's just it's everything. It was a group of Cane Corsos who bit through the hard steel beams of of the second tower. And Eli Roth is just one of the walking Kane Corsos given sentience. What the fuck? So, uh, so uh, wrong turn. I do want to talk about the last shot of the movie real quick, because I, I was actually very impressed by it. Um, is that the one about the Amish? No. <laughs> yes, that's the one where so she's so she They're goes wizards. off with the guy that impregnated her in like an RV and like you think that that's the end of the movie. You think, like, credits start to roll. And as the RV drives away, the RV swerves and crashes. Um, 
and they all run out of the RV and the lead of the movie uh, jumps out of the RV and kills all of them. Um, okay, that's awesome. On screen. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's a very good ending. Like, at the end, it's like, oh, she's just going to, like, brutally murder all these people who just threatened her family. I- I'm, in, I'm, I'm down for that. I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, it, it's very well done. It's very well shot. I want to see this director work on something that isn't just like a, I would call it a fuck you movie. Um, oh, yeah, it I mean, is. I, I'm, fuck you, I mean, you know, there's a quote actually on here that I was thinking before I read it, which was, which is uh, someone from Vangoria talking about the movie. I was fully prepared to be thrust into a slasher world of cannibals eating human flesh and splitting people down the middle. We all know what he's referencing there. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm glad that it wasn't just Bone Tomahawk said in the modern day. I, I would have been uh, angry. I would have turned it off at that point. Um, they tried something, which was interesting. So, hmm. yeah. Well, the yeah. question I have, the protagonist mm. of the movie, did she get her COVID shot? I think she did. I, I think well, she, that would explain why she killed everyone. The nanomachines were activated <laughs> within her bloodstream when it turned her into a killer for Bill Gates. So, yes. Not I'm trying to anyway, um, Eli Roth was also... You uh, can't uh, silence me! Go uh, away, Jesse Ventura. I will, I'll call Hulk Hogan, okay? He quieted you up real fucking fast. He's too busy dealing with rape charges that I planted on him. <laughs> For a second, I was like, wait, is that news? <laughs> no, that's, I just assume that's what's yeah. going on at all times with, with Terry's life. Yeah, yeah. the oh, race, brother, racism, racism, uh, racism. Oh, brother, I didn't do that. Homophobia. Sex. Yeah, homophobia yeah. Um, and conspiracy theories. Um, Eli Roth was attached to, in some way, the movie that became Frankenstein's Army. Because um, that movie did not start out as Frankenstein's Army. It started out as a movie called Worst Case Scenario. Um, which was about like a zombie army invading the World Cup during nice. uh, like the anniversary of World War Two or something like that. Nice. Wait, no, what? it's ice. It's ice hunter. It's not nice. Ice. Ice. Um, World Cup. Um, ice which then became Frankenstein's army. But like, yeah, Eli Roth like endorsed the project. I think like contributed to it, and then like after Inglorious Bastards came out, like his name first disappeared from like the marketing material, and then reappeared as some Inglorious Bastard. Or some bastard or something like that. He wouldn't name him. It was very bizarre. Fun, uh, fun side note about uh, Frankenstein's army. Uh, Capcom got sued by them because the he design did. for the one guy. <laughs> I, for- I forgot. Yeah. yeah. Just like they were sued by some, uh, I want to say it was a digital artist that they just wholesale took yeah. a lot of their, their stuff. And like it was very quietly solved outside of the public eye. Yeah, I didn't hear about that because that's Richard Rapport's, and like I think his only movie is Frankenstein's Army. So that's like his thing. So yeah, I remember hearing about. Well, the- when, that doesn't shock me because I'm sure that like when when you are a disenfranchised game developer and you're like, I gotta draw this fucking a fucking monster for like <laughs> eighteen million times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, or I don't I don't want to draw spider webs on this. Just yeah, to steal these from online. <laughs> and now they're just they've. The transition to just monsters we all want to fuck. So it's like, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait for a sexy merman. It's gonna be great. <laughs> we almost had it in village. Almost. Almost. They almost. hinted at it. Uh, uh, kind of. Varys? What? Wait, what? Varys from Game of Thrones. Oh, oh. Uh, oh I mean. <laughs> He might be someone's company. Hunter, I was like, the, the smile on my face the day we showed you the fucking Reddit rabbit hole of is Varys Merman. Like, <laughs> I can't believe that's a real thing. Oh my god. It's is a real he? thing. It has so much compelling evidence. Is. <laughs> I think he might be. There's like, there's a couple of lines that like, that, like one of them is like, uh, something, 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 or I'll throw you into the sea. And Varys is like, you'd be surprised at what happens next. That's my big like. Mm, like, <laughs> are you? I I I like to think that George R. R. Martin he never intended to make him a merman, and he just he saw the red he, thread. He's like, fuck. Yeah, I better put this in the, <laughs> put this in the show. But I'll never say what he is. I'll just allude to it constantly. 
I'd love it if the final shot of that show was him just swimming away. <laughs> swimming away is fine. Daenerys can burn alive. It's it would be like the end of like Splash or something where he's, <laughs> yeah. he goes under the water and then he has a giant tail that comes up and that's the only <laughs> indication that you get. No, it's like Prancer where you just uh, you you give these the most lazy half-assed illusion to something magical, but also lean on the idea that something very sad might have just happened. <laughs> I have no idea what that movie is. Uh, Prancer is about we watched it for a movie I'm sure and the ending is fucking it's it's a fucking doozy um it's about like this girl finds what is supposedly prancer from santa's sleigh injured in her town and she's like nursing him back to health but everyone's like you're fucking nuts kid in this whole movie there is not one inkling of supernatural activity like this might be this might as well be just a regular ass fucking deer going and just fucking knocking things over um and the end of the movie is she releases him and this deer runs up a cliffside runs to a cliff and you don't see what happens. Oh. And then at some point, like, there's just these these bright lights that soar across the sky. And then, like, Sam Neill is her dad, and he looks up like, oh, maybe that's Santa. But also, the way it's shot, it's almost like maybe that deer ran to the edge of the cliff and fucking died. Okay? <laughs> oh, so maybe that was, like, a medical helicopter bringing his daughter away. For all we know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, it doesn't it's... lean into either one like hard enough for you to be like, is this a happy ending in this kid's movie? You just kill that fucking deer. Christ. <laughs> um uh, so I know I know Arlen, you had seen something on uh what is it, Nexpo's video you watched half oh, of it. And, my yeah, I, God. yeah. Have we have we all watched some of these? I have Holy not shit. yet. I've not Hunter's watched oh, like, two hundred. Okay, as like as as I regard the SCP archives and as like Arlen and like other I, I'm not sure Eric too like regards the Magnus archives, the shit's cool as shit. Mm. Um it's a yeah. it's an alien invasion story as told through like like PSA VHS tapes. Is it even alien? It's, it's, yeah, it's more like is that like Channel Five Celestial or no, Channel. Yeah, it's, it's, like a love, it's a Love Creation encounter with like one of the, like a cosmic yeah. being essentially. That sounds yeah, pretty like, cool. It's, yeah. it's it's interesting because it it leads itself open to to many different interpretations. Because I mean, I've only watched like three of the videos, so. I don't know what the bigger through line is, if there even is one, or if this is just you guys extrapolating from what you see in it. So but you've it's... seen, you know what the iris is, right? Uh, no, I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if shit. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, no, I the next the... video goes in pretty deep, but yeah, okay. like there's, there, there's a, there's a thread and there's a thing going on. It's something, it's something bigger. It's something more on a, on a different scale than, than just like aliens. Um, yeah, yeah, it is a like, cosmic entity, essentially. Well, yeah. like, um, I what is that, uh, Hunter? Uh, easiest way for me to describe it, I think, quickly for you. What is that, uh, that one game that was out on PC? That's like a card game, but it's also got that. Oh, really inscription. Bizarre... Inscription. All right. So, you do you know what like the big story of inscription is? No. Uh, I'm like a uh, halfway through it, but I under, I, I, I kind of have an inkling. Of what's okay. Going well, on. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into what I know from watching videos yeah together. but um but it's take some of the weird ideas in that and like these things are all being presented as like educational videos <laughs> so it it kind of feels like some of the stuff that goes on in inscription with some of the fmv stuff and just oh like cool a okay weird, there's a weirdness going on with it like that's the easiest way for me to describe it yeah but, like, like there, I, one of the things i can describe to you is like there's a video for like storm safety and it starts yeah. off really, really normal and then it's like um do you hear the sirens? Look to the field. Do you see lights? Return to what? your <laughs> Yeah. And then it does a quick shot of like an open field and you see a light and then like four more and then like it another is six. Terrifying. Okay, I need to, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this when I hop off. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it is yeah. as interesting as it's terrifying. And like there's footage of somebody uh there's like a first person view. It's like one of the first two videos of like someone looking in someone's house. It's the first one. It's, it's the first the, one. Uh, and like crawlers. It's these yeah, he yeah. Call, he calls them nature's mockery. Yeah. And, what? Uh yeah. And like he's videotaping this couple and they're walking around the house in like what Arlen described as like glorified sleep mode. Like they're not doing anything. They're just yeah. peopling. Mm -hmm. Like they're just yeah. walking back and forth. And at some point Hello, fellow humans. He catches them Makes both sense. standing in like the living room, just 
staring at absolutely nothing being completely motionless. Well, there's, there's also Fucking one or two. Terrifying. There's also one or two of that same family where, like, it has video of somebody in the house just, like, moving their jaw strangely, like, as if they're yeah. trying to look like they're talking or something. And then there's one where you see that same person, like, notices this guy as he's at oh. the front door. Oh, that's like, the shit out of me. Yeah, runs this at the runs camera. towards the camera. Is this a series that Maxwell made? No, no, it's, it's not. It's, it's not next. It's, basically no, it's yeah. It's like an ARG I, or a link to a game that he. Oh, covering. okay. So it's it like was? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Halfway through, they revealed there's a PC game you can get called Lethal Omen, and it kind of oh, spills out what's okay. happening in easier to digest terms. It, um, mm-hmm. But it's also got like references to like the videotapes and everything. So like the videotapes are like supplemental material that like for like I said, it's like an ARG, but it's almost like. It is as compelling and deep as, like, I would say, like, some SCP stuff. Yeah. Like, okay. it's really, really fleshed out, and it's supposed to be, it's basically just, it's marketing for a game. It's awesome. Yeah. I did it's, not it's know really that. It's, it's really well done um, by whoever, whoever made it. Like, they, I, I mean, and again, they're drawing from that same sort of well, whether intentionally or not, like, just, and I, yeah, I just really like the tone and the vibe of all of it. <clears throat> Yeah, it just... starts off like these, like you said, these what do you say, like education videos? That's that's the yeah. impression you get. Like it's got like the VHS tracking thing going on. So yeah. like like these seem like videos that like some kid would find in the woods in like a horror mm-hmm. movie setup and nice. starts watching these things. Yeah, yeah. not those but... videos. Those came in. Those and were magazine not... only. Okay. Yes, exactly. it's not a it's not a documentary hunter. Sadly, <laughs> no. Enough. And um, um I, like it's I don't know. It just it, and they get weird all of a sudden. Right. Yeah, it's that's the thing. Like, it's it's you're like, all right, this is interesting. I guess whatever. Oh, what? Oh, oh no, this is highly incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is very similar to. I think it's local eighty four or or channel eighty four or something like that. Local something. I can't remember what it's called, but it's a similar YouTube channel. And in that yeah. one, the thing is that um, don't look at the moon. Yeah, don't look at the moon. Um, and it's like. The, these flashing videos and like you know alarm sirens and like you know uh, public service announcement sirens intercut with footage of the moon and it at first it's it's very zoomed out so it just looks like the moon and as it zooms in and in and in and in you see like weird shapes forming on the moon's surface um huh. like something is like breaking out of it whoa um or like infecting it oh um, okay cool um yeah Kind of, but like a good version of Moonfall. Like, hey, like hey, not let's, bad. Let's hey, whoa, whoa, answer. hey. Yeah, that is the movie hey, of the hey. that is the movie of the year. Exactly. It's gonna sweep the Oscars next year, dude. Exactly. <laughs> it better. It better. <laughs> no, and, uh, Roll, Roland Emmerich is saving cinema, guys. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully it'll rate higher than Black Hat. Um it's <laughs> Gemini Home Entertainment is the name of the uh of the YouTube whatnot. I sent the link uh to you then, Hunter. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's really cool and really weird, and it's like my exact type of weird that I love. Like, yeah, it's the kind of it's is the very menacing, easily digestible, menacing, and like rabbit hole enabling kind of weird. Where you're just like, mm-hmm. I need more right away. Yeah, yeah. It's and very you know, um, it's very Marble Hornets. Like, okay. I get, I've I don't I've never had time to sit down and watch all of Marble Hornets. It's not worth watching, but it's interesting. The Marble Hornets yeah. is cool. Here's the thing: Marble Hornets is like. The last broadcast to the Blair Witch Project, I would say, it, like Marble Hornets is is, really, is technical is technically kind of weak, and like the reveals are spread so far apart that you might as well just watch like the Slender Man like footage all in a supercut because it's fucking terrifying when he does show up. Um, but everything else is like, eh, it's fucking on this reel, something weird happened. You know, see you next week. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the thing. Oh, go ahead, Andrew. It, it Marble Hornets is a thing where like. It's it's cool when you first learn about it, and then mm-hmm. if you watch it, you're just like, okay, this isn't as cool as I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I had that exact same thing because, like, I read about it. I'm like, this sounds really cool, and mm-hmm. then I watched like two videos, and I was like, like that was just a guy walking around. Like, there, there, nothing yeah. happened. Like, what well, am I, also, what am I supposed to be seeing? Also, that subgenre of like, um of a filmed creepypasta ARG type thing mm-hmm. 
it's just it's just developed since then also yeah. like yeah and that's why i said that's why i called it last exists. broadcast because like that's like mm-hmm. it's the proto found footage horror film and like exactly it's doing cool shit but like it's also very bizarre and it's just a, such a weird fucking ending mm. um yeah. yeah and then like the and like blair witch comes yeah. along and does what that did but does it so much better right you know i mean i, I imagine it'd be a lot like um what is it lonely girl 19 who was the mm-hmm. first like youtube thing where it wasn't completely real where it was like somebody lying and youtube had up until then mostly been like people sincerely blogging about their lives yeah. um and like that just kicked off a whole wave of this kind of stuff um so yeah like it's gonna evolve it's gonna change over time and yeah i think i do think that it's it has reached sort of another plateau where it's like if you see any kind of creepy video on the internet Mm -hmm. you automatically assume it's an arg now yeah um you know how many videos of the rape i've seen where i'm like oh for fuck's sake (laughs) well or yeah or it's that or it's just like somebody like you know trying out their special effects abilities you know putting Guys, a head is real <laughs> i saw him i saw him oh, yeah i saw him on paranormal con on camera you. and they Zyron. and uh did it and... has appeared here in this field that could be real maybe it's cgi maybe it's a, a green screen asset i found uh, i don't know <laughs> i can't really <laughs> tell and meanwhile it's just like something walking and it's not even like <laughs> looking like it's walking on the ground <laughs> I have somewhere water else. on my brain. Um, <laughs> somewhere yeah. else in the world, Trevor Henderson is just laughing, just cackling, just <laughs> what have I done to the world? Uh, but with the with the whole thing of like of well put together like series of obviously fictional creepy stuff, like I love when it's done as well as these these Gemini whatever the fuck it is thing <laughs> videos because like you can tell there's some real thought put into it where they're like, nope, don't give them a whole lot. Like give them this very basic outline from what you guys are saying of what's actually going on. And I mean, knowing that it's connected to a game, cool. But like when something like that hits, it's always so good, but there's a billion people out there trying to do it. And it nine, nine, nine times out of 10 doesn't work out. Yeah. So when you find one of these, you're like, Oh God, I I need to just like slowly just absorb this. Um, Mm -hmm. Arlen, what was that fucking paranormal group that I showed? I put in the chat where like it was this bunch of like online paranormal, like uh, you know, paranormal uh, ghost hunters. There was like teenagers, and like one of them like went missing or something afterwards, allegedly. Oh, that was um no, I saw a video about this. There was a there was like this thing where um oh who the fuck covered it? Oh shit, um, <sighs> that might that might have been another an expo video actually. There was an no, expo. it was the other one. It was um the girl. Shit. No wait, no, it, it was Rainbow. yeah, it was the girl. It was Rainbow. Right, and it was like she got a question about whether or not these ghost hunters were real <clears throat> or an ARG, and I think she came to the conclusion it was an ARG that just never went anywhere. But it okay. was like no, it's it definitely like, not real. I mean, you, you watch the footage, it's definitely. No, it's not. No, it's, it's, it's at some it. point, the, the yeah. you know the veil is lifted, but like, there's a, they have one jump scare that was so unexpected for what they were building towards. Mm-hmm. It scared it scared the piss oh out yeah, of uh, the one that got uh, through the fucking door. Yeah, it's just it it you're there. It's just like isn't it just like a like a panning shot, and then you see some dude just open a door. He opens a fucking door, and he's got like a and like nobody a, acknowledges it. That's nobody the acknowledges it. Yeah, they, they didn't yeah. catch it. Like he was peeking in on them, and then he just walks away. And like yeah, and the mm-hmm. end of the whole thing like ends with like what could be a home invasion or something like that. So you're like ah yeah, this isn't real, but like man, up to that point, like fucking effective and really good. Yeah. I was gonna say if that was covered in an expo video, it would mean that somebody's gonna get killed by a tornado. Yeah. Because that dude live. covers tornadoes a whole lot. He does. He loves well, tornadoes. He does have to come up with like a whole list of. To things. be fair, some of that say. footage is scary. It Nexpo, is. Yeah, it Nexpo is. Nexpo is a great channel, but sometimes you're like a new Nexpo video, and it's the biggest fucking wet fart. Like you're <laughs> like, man, it's two hours are, of this. Like there are some of them where it's like. All right, I don't know if you needed to put this much effort, but you put the effort in, so I'm not going to turn this off because you clearly spent a lot of time yeah. on this. Um, and, and there are some of them where it's like, oh, you could have spent more time on this. You could have you could have gone even deeper. Like when he did the video about the um, 
uh, the essentially a follow up to the "Have you seen this man?" posters, mm-hmm. uh, where he like went out and bought a burner phone and like called the number. Um, I was like, okay, did did anything happen after that? Did nope. you? Did you? And this is no follow up. It's like keep on going down that line because apparently there are people that are still doing that. that are still putting those signs up and putting those numbers out. It's like, I think okay, that's, I, I think that's something that's just been like a self perpetuating cycle, like because mm-hmm. it's such a, a well done creepy thing because it's, yeah. you know, there's, there's not enough evidence to follow it up, but there's also not enough evidence to disprove it i guess right so it's it's yeah. just like every time a new generation finds it like somebody gets the chutzpah to be like yeah i'm gonna print out some of these flyers yeah and this is fun yeah. um was it next well it's not even that it has number. the guy with the face it's just the same number that's the mm-hmm. real yeah. the thing and it's like oh that's that's interesting that's a way to to do it without making it clear what you're it's like a weird creepy meme yeah. that's just kind of like an actual yeah. meme yeah. not an internet meme um yeah, yeah. Um, was it next for the cover the story about like the guy whose friend went to like he was like camping out in the edge of like what military base and then just disappears and so he like but his friend finds his camera and all of his fucking videotapes like I don't think that one was ever proven to be an ARG or not. I think it was like legitimate. Hmm. Yeah, that's I've I haven't watched many of Nexpo's videos, like at least the deep dive ones. Like the reason why I said the thing about tornadoes was because the like three or four like whatever they are like creepiest videos i found on the internet type of things every single one of them had like a, a tornado video in it and i was just like dude what are you not telling well, me yeah, about yeah, your yeah. erections he's on episode 15 of those and yeah. it's like okay at a, at a certain point you know and also if you go to the early ones, it's a lot of stuff that is obviously an ARG where it's like he would never put that on there. He 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 said recently that he's trying not to put ARGs on those. He's trying to find things that he thinks are legit, um, mm-hmm. you know, or that at least feel legit. Um, so like when you remove <laughs> when you remove ARGs or things that could be ARGs or that feel like ARGs. Uh, you get a lot of tornado videos. And yeah, re- seems <laughs> a- Hell yeah. <laughs> there is that footage, though, of, like, the flood. Like, I think it's, like, a flood or a tsunami or something, and it's, like, at a concert, and it's the most horrifying shit I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I've never seen that. That sounds... Oh, it's the one where the, the, the band is playing and the fucking wave hits them from behind, right? Yes, and yeah. it just wipes everything yeah, out. Yeah, tell you, like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, three of those guys died. Like, Yeah, it is, it is really scary, because, like, there's nothing they could do. It's no. just... It, it, they're there and then they're gone. They're there. Well, they're, they're they're at a concert first of all. So like, yeah, a big back, backdrop. So like, nobody can see this thing coming, and the water just rips through this fucking background. And yeah, it's it's, it's bad. I, I wish, I wish with all my heart that it would be a great white concert after the horrible tragedy that oh happened my with God. one where they burned down the club. <laughs> I think just... they sh- he showed that footage too. Oh God, I think he I did. did. Yeah. I just, yeah, he, I just he, like the irony yeah. of a band named Great White being killed by. By by giant wave. <laughs> also being killed by water, the the enemy of the thing that killed all those people at the uh, concert. Well, well I want man, and man, and fire, to no, no, get no, killed no. by a great white is what I want next. Uh, <laughs> no, that's too obvious. It's too on the head. No, no one in the band died from uh, the 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 fucking whatever club burning down. I don't want to say that's awful, but techniques. like ah, uh, just doesn't seem doesn't fair. seem fair, does it? Yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> that's like I said. That's why I wish water would have taken him out. Or you know, a mudslide or potholes or right. Oh, yeah. or a sinkhole? No, a pothole. Pot, pothole? How big? How fucking big of a pothole? Well, like, were they driving and they hit a it? Pot- Is that? Yeah. The... Oh my god! Yes, look out for that pot canyon. Car. It flipped apart. I mean, um, yeah. You joke, but that? there are some big potholes in this country, man. Yeah. I mean, I live in New look Hampshire, man. Pothole, I know. <laughs> we got I terrible know. infrastructure because we're libertarian. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. But, but right. Hunter, we have to go to war with Russia, don't you know? No. We can't. Uh, uh, um, listen, Jack, get back to work. Um, uh, yeah. Go, Brian. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Fuck you. Fuck Joe Biden. See, I can say it. I can say it. I don't exactly. have to fucking. I don't have to hide it under a fucking stupid saying and act like I'm getting away with something. Let's um, go, Brandon. Yeah. 
Like I voted for the guy, and I'm even saying that. Fuck. But Eric, I have no idea what let's go Brandon means. So like, it's, oh, it's, so it just right, means there, it, it. There was what was it? Was it Biden was being interviewed at something like near a NASCAR event, or someone was, and someone in the audience started chanting "fuck Joe Biden." And they're like, oh, what, what's the crowd saying? And somebody said, like, oh, well, they're saying, let's go, Brandon. <laughs> so now the the right has decided that that's the funniest thing on earth. And it's just like, oh, guys, come on. No, it's not. Yeah, it's that, not. Is, that, that is literally what pro wrestling commentators do when the audience hijacks the match. Yep. Like, <laughs> that's what Vince McMahon does, okay? Like... <laughs> Here's the thing. This changes pre- the narrative and it tells you what you're hearing. It's so weird. Like, uh, I, I had a blast from the past the other day listening to, like, an old podcast episode of a, of, of a fairly popular show. Um, and at one point, one of them brings up Kofefe. Um, uh, and it, <laughs> I, I, I almost thought I had a stroke. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember that moment of like, holy shit! Remember when everybody got really like obsessed with this one oh, fucking tweet that meant absolutely nothing that I had think, no I think, I think on the, anything. The, the intrigue was it was like, what the fuck were you doing? Like, <laughs> well, it's it's be, the whole reason it got all that intrigue around it is because Trump wouldn't admit like, yeah, sorry, I screwed up. Yeah. He's like, well, no. I, nope, I said I, what I said. I would never tweet wrong. Never. never my thumbs have never slipped. Nope. Oh, God. <laughs> nope, I didn't have a long like holding me up. It's been 15 years since Cafefe, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, it hasn't been long enough. He's not dead yet. Um, anyways. Either uh, of them are, but man, one looks closer than the other one, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Yeah, well, I yeah, well, I mean, uh, it's uh, the Pence has to stick around to make sure mutants die. Um, God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, he has to oversee mutant well, legislation. It's not just Hunter. Death. Let's Hunter, let's pivot away from this topic. <laughs> Hunter, um, I'm I might be misremembering what it what it's called, but um, you want to tell me about big mouth mode? Oh, mouthful mode. Mouthful what mode. That's fuck? it. <laughs> so Kirby, okay, in Kirby, <laughs> a new Kirby game that's coming out March 25th, along with like three other games. So he has this new ability called Mouthful Mode, <laughs> which means he just he sw- he tries. I, I don't even know how to describe it. He like he, he wraps himself around things via his mouth. He has four powers essentially. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And like it gets a different but like one of them is him like like wrapped around like a light bulb. Yes. <laughs> and then what what like, about he's just, just things to be playing over this like he's just stretched man. over a car. It's yes. and with the one with the one that he stretched over a car, I am so happy that the internet did what I wanted it to do and somebody changed the car to Lightning McQueen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw that one. <laughs> It's so good. Oh, man. So I, I've yeah. been seeing these, and I had no context for what it was. I am... Fucking now. My fucking god. Like, the one that I saw of uh, uh, an all-pink Eva. Uh, so good. So good. <laughs> so, so funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty great. <laughs> Although, I'm... Um, I, that Kirby game is going to make me buy a Switch. I hate it. It's so, it's, it looks so good, honestly. It's he has like, a gun. He they gave a gun. Kirby a gun. You can't do that. These fucking pictures. Oh my mm-hmm. Mouthful mode. And they, they call it mouthful mode, which is the worst part. I just, I don't understand how somebody wasn't like, guys, nah, no, no, doing the like. No the one at Nintendo owns throat. a computer. I swear to no. God. No, I don't think they do. Like, or if they do, they have like an Atari like ST or like an Apple IIe at this point, where they're just like using discs. Like they, that's why the internet is so bad with the Switch and oh, most of I Nintendo. I just saw one where it's, it says Kirby Mouthful Mode, and he's just he's just swallowing a, and then just like just falling asleep with this bed mm-hmm. inside of him. It's so fucked up. I don't know why they did this. Let Kirby swallow you whole and fall asleep inside him. I mean, props to whoever's handling Kirby for like 
when the Smash Bros. thing happened, they're like, no, 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 only Kirby survives. And, like, everyone talked about fucking Kirby <laughs> for six months. And, like, now we're doing this shit again. Like, I mean... That, that whole thing is just because Kirby is Sakurai's baby. Yeah. Not, not yeah. yeah. I'm, just, I, I'm just thinking about, you know, how many of mini vids videos will be about this uh, yeah, well, going well, forward um will it be 100 percent of mini vids 10 yes. percent of mini vids yes i don't know it's funny uh, you went that direction because this morning i watched the internet historian video on uh the, the downfall of rainforest what? The, oh I, my oh, god wow. hold up you don't know what rainforest is i'm 40 i'm almost 44 years old there's I a lot know of what it was I either don't. hang on okay so rainforest Rainforest uh, was a furry convention at a Hilton hotel oh no. in the Midwest that went so disastrously oh, yeah, I've heard bad yeah. that they talked to other hotel chains in the like oh. in like the rest of the country and said, "Do not have this convention at your facility." Yeah, oh. yeah, I've I've heard. Then, like I've one heard of the craziest things I heard was like there was like a room found with like two hundred thousand nitrous oxide uh, canisters just lying around. Oh yeah, they were just doing whippets and getting. They were just doing up, whippets like... and getting so fucked up. Like there was uh, I, one of the details I found this morning was that people were doing something called crinkling, which is to walk around uh, and Excuse it, me. because of the, the yeah, yep adults yeah, okay. walk and some of these diapers were full. I have the weirdest boner right now. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. We, God, I think we're nearing the end here. <laughs> no, that's that. There's so many things that could be said. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, yeah. just, you know like, what somebody, you've done, Connor? Somebody, somebody had loosened one of the um the pipes in a, in a toilet. So, like, the moment someone flushed, that entire bathroom was filled with two inches of water, which then leaked down into the basement onto the servers. Oh. Um, People What's were finding. Crazy? People were finding. Yeah, I have no idea, dude. This place was it went off the fucking rails. Like, um, there was uh, people were filling their diapers and leaving them on cars. Um, people were arrested no. for dealing drugs and then doing drugs. People were arrested for drunk, uh, being drunk in public. Someone stuffed like twenty towels into the hot tub pump and just destroyed the whole thing. Jesus. Um, Right. It, it was. It, it's like a. It's like two hundred thousand dollars worth of damage. Like it's ridiculous amount of damage they did. What the one fuck? Hotel. I. I know. Like you thought. You think Dashcon was like you know a fucking disaster? Oh my god, the fucking video. Well, fucking it. I hate to break it to you. All of these people would be fans of B stars. They would be. <laughs> yeah. So all of these. Ho so th this hotel and any other hotel that would host this convention, they'd all be better off. Just hosting the actual animals these people dressed yeah. as. Yeah, you'd have yeah. less damage. Yeah. <laughs> and if if you had all the predators in the room with all of the uh, herbivores, <laughs> like, you'd, you'd have the mess in just one room, and that's yeah. it. Well, yeah, no, be very, be some of those rooms people, like, I know what's going to happen here. Like, no one's going to put on a diaper and shit on the floor. Like, that's, that's what's yeah. not going to happen. <laughs> like, in the room where you placed a bear... Uh, three wolves and a mountain lion. Um, shit's gonna get fucked up. Shit's gonna yeah. be real bad. Oh yeah. my well, god. I I also like the idea of telling all these other hotels. Oh no, host this convention. Just let us know when, and then they buy a bunch of sarin and just poison all of these people while they're at the convention <laughs> because Christ. none of them deserve to live. Jesus Christ, Eric. <laughs> no, no, furries are an abomination. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Fucking, um, what's that cult called, Hunter? Fucking, uh... uh oh, uh... Fuck, uh, um... Uh, what's the, it called? The Japanese one, right? Yes, um... Oh, uh, oh yeah, Unshin um, Rikyo. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That's it. Um, Shin Rikyo shows up. <laughs> yes. Yes, we will yeah. remove. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's. We I've been, I've been watching the videos of the glorious leader, and this is what he's telling me needs to happen. So, Jesus Christ! Now we will. Uh, is that the um, that the, the, with the our uh, butt. big fat guy with the beard? Yeah, yeah, yeah Shoko Asahara. I've I also been. I've something. also been hiding razor blades underneath my skin, so when I eventually go to prison, I will be safe. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait, was that a thing too? Yeah. No, that was that was something from the Invisibles. That, uh, oh, okay. There's a guy oh, okay. who's a follower of them who I believed it, razor though. blades under his skin. Uh, Shogo Asahara is a guy where you could tell me a million things about him, and I would probably believe half of them because he's yeah. such an odd individual. Um, 
yeah well that yeah that last that last podcast on the left about them that was fascinating because i did not know yeah. half of the stuff that they were telling me about i was like holy shit this is so I weird about the oh, yeah. attack. i had no idea that there was a cult connected to it i yeah it was just yeah oh yeah I knew, me. I knew there was a, a cult after like the sarin attack happened but i didn't I know knew that those two history. things were connected but i know nothing else but the guy and the cult yeah, honest, like that last podcast on the left is the easiest way to learn all this stuff in a very yeah. digestible way. Yeah, it's a very, yeah, it's a very compact way to get all that. And I, I've retained most of it, which is a good sign, I think, for my more from my mental health than the quality <laughs> of the show. Um, but also the show. Um, yeah, like it's there's a lot of weird details. Like he was very inspired by Asimov and like classic mm -hmm. sci fi. Yeah. Um, Spaceship yeah. Yamato. Well, wasn't is... wasn't he a failed like sci-fi writer? Uh, well, he was he, he was publishing it. things in sci-fi magazine. Okay, that. he was. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. But I think in and Hunter, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to you because why not? Um, <laughs> like, there's more of a culture of like letting people who aren't professionals write for stuff like that than there is. I think so. Here. Probably. Um, I get the sense i get um it, it i feel like the the boundary between a fan writing like manga and a person writing it professionally is much lower there i have no clue what i'm talking about obviously so yeah <laughs> great assault um but yeah like i, I think that's the thing so he might have tried for magazines and i think that, that that culture of like writing for a magazine is just more alive than it is here in in the states currently i feel like it's yeah. You know, the internet might have helped, but especially in the 90s, I think is when this was happening. Like, that was kind of dying out here. Um, you weren't finding a lot of writers from sci fi magazines for the most no. part. No, um, I, you had a lot of people that were hoping to be the next, like, whatever sci fi name got started doing that stuff. Kind of like, kind of like how Stephen yeah, King got started, like, writing into various, like, sci fi and horror magazines. By the way, who eats grass? Right, yeah, exactly. Right. That was one. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Like there were so oh, many yeah, other one, man. Even yeah. then, like Brian Fuller got started because he just showed up at the Paramount Studios and like gave his scripts to people working on Star Trek until they yeah. hired him. Basically, okay. it, I mean, John G. Dio was a dental technician, I believe, before he was a horror writer. So I get it. That makes yeah. entirely yeah. too much. Sense. I, that, you know what? That, I said the same thing. I can't quite. explain why Heck, i was like oh that's yeah that's absolutely what he did yeah I, so speaking of uh people getting jobs because they just showed they were good at things um i not to get into this so late in the show but are, have we all seen the fourth episode of the book of boba fett i've seen them all i have yeah, too yeah. um but if i'm uh, connor what have you seen of it so far what is the fourth episode because i believe I that's the one with the return of of luke and grogu oh okay. I... i've seen a no that's six that's yeah that's... i think you got your numbers up. four is when it stops being the boba show and it becomes uh, after that the next two are mostly mando focused yeah. okay and yeah then... it is it is episode six isn't it yeah i, I, I know it. what you're talking about though i haven't seen all of well, it but I, I i know pretty much what's going on yeah, like it just it's crazy to me and it's awesome that the guy who like after Luke showed up at the end of Mandalorian season two, he's like, that's not good. This is how you deep fake Mark Hamill. And he like put up stuff on YouTube and hey, lo and behold, he's the dude who was hired to do Luke Skywalker's you know deep fake in this is, in this is season. he doing the voice because no, the voice is that, very off-putting that was something that was really interesting to me because my wife and i when we were watching it she's like is that really mark hamill because that that sounds weird and i i was convinced it was just because mark hamill's old so he was doing the best he could to imitate his his young voice but he couldn't do it for long lo and behold that was computer generated what the voice mm -hmm. the yeah, voice was computer heard. generated that's it, terrifying it sounds so yeah. bad it went through well, yeah. years of his dialogue from whatever and audiobooks was apparently. Yeah. Audiobooks. And was able to piece together his That's dialogue this crazy. way. That's why it sounded kind of stilted and off. It sounded it sounded like 
Like, legitimately, like, someone was doing a bad impression. Yeah. Grogu. Yeah. I, but that's the thing, that he was, com- other than the actor who was in his place for the, for where to put the, the fake face, like, that's ridiculous. That, a, that hmm? seems a bit far. <laughs> I, just, you know what I mean, just, here's my thing, and like I, I was thinking about this like last week because I knew we were going to talk about this eventually. Like, <clears throat> at this point, just get someone who looks and sounds like Mark. You've yeah. got one in house. His name is Sebastian Stan. Yeah, Every they're just spending money like, for no reason. Doing? Like, this can only go so far before people are like, "All right, like, what the fuck? Like, can you get a person to do this because it's getting a little janky?" It's just we. It's off putting. It's just like it takes me out of it when I hear his voice and it's just this robotic. Like this like is you, a training you really module. Han Solo. Like you went. You already trampled sacred ground. Like if you're gonna, it do doesn't it, matter. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't matter doesn't anymore. Matter. Just get Sebastian Stan. Like I don't understand why you're doing all this. I, it's because I I think they're already probably paying him a very hefty sum and that would require more negotiations than they really want to deal with. So the it's cheaper for them to do this deep fake and do the computer generated voice than it is to pay Sebastian Stan. Man, it just seems like so much extra fucking work. And like, it's a lot like, of money and it's only, for no reason. And it's only competent, like most of the time. And then when it's not competent, you're like, Jesus Christ, that's or, not real fucking here's great. a, here's a crazy idea. Here's an absolute insane, like out of left field idea. Maybe you shouldn't put Luke Skywalker in the fucking show. If you yes. can't do it. <laughs> yes. Maybe let the Skywalkers be done. Yeah, I maybe. Also can't believe, that's the other thing. I can't believe how much Luke Skywalker we've gotten from yeah. these two shows and the movies. The 22, yeah, I mean, like, well, not even like that. Just like, I didn't think in a million years that they would use Luke Skywalker anywhere else except the fucking movies. Because that's like, it's it would be like seeing Thor show up in Daredevil. Like, it would never yeah. fucking happen. Um, and then it happens not just once, but twice, and then three times. Like, what the? F- I'm like, this is insane. Right. And then the fact that they keep doing it makes me wish they just use a fucking person. Like, if you're going yeah. to do this, mm-hmm. just use a fucking human being. Well, well, so I'm, we're just... Yeah. Mm, yeah there's ahead, a lot. I think, you know what, you know what yeah. I think they're worried about? Is I think they're worried mm. about Twitter. I think it's just like, they're like, well, if we don't make this exactly right, like with crazy technology, people are going to yell at us. Yeah. I mean, or this not. is my problem with Disney in general and, and everybody working under them. Is this like, we have to make everybody happy? thing no really fuck everybody else just, yeah, yeah no <laughs> no they just, need to stop uh, yeah. yeah exactly they, they've because, already they've yeah. already been proven to have a terrible fan base like yeah like 40 mm-hmm. percent of their fan base are terrible people just say goodbye to them it doesn't yeah. matter just like, make good movies I don't, like and, and i like book yeah. of both it's fine i don't yeah it's not my favorite but it's like right yeah, yeah. i i'm never going like arlen said like it was fun to watch, but never going back to it. Nope. 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 And and that's that was important because I've rewatched season one of The Mandalorian at least twice. Um Good. maybe even four times. I've lost track. And got, it's not Yeah. Go ahead. I, no, I was just gonna say I I don't have time to do that. My my time on this earth is fleeting. Yeah. Sorry, well, I can't. Eric, one of those times I was showing it to somebody else. Otherwise I okay. wouldn't have like that's that's a big thing for me is showing it to other people um but like it's not a question of whether or not i'm gonna watch season two at least one more time it's just a matter of when what the situation is am i showing that to somebody am i just like feeling in a bad mood and i just watch one episode and i end up watching a bunch of them um which is something that happens you know you go back to tv that you like and then you just don't press stop you just let it continue on going yeah yeah, happens to me all the Sometimes time. you watch all community in a couple days. That's what you do. <laughs> I, I just there's so much stuff I haven't seen. Like the idea of going back and rewatching something that I have seen. I'm just like I especially more recent stuff. Like I feel like more recent stuff is a lot more disposable in one way or another, regardless of how good it is. Like no, I, I, I'm 100 with you. There are only a few things that I can do this with, Eric. There are only yeah. like a select number I, of things I can really do this with. Um, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's, it's much... Shrubs, for some reason, just say any day of the week. Like, you put on any season, I'll sit through it. I Yeah, I just... I, well, one, I don't, I don't have the patience for, like, 
I don't know, like half hour or even like 45 minutes scripted comedy anymore. I don't know what it is. Mm. Like, I also I tr- rewatch every like, like I put on Rick and Morty because like Adult Swim has that 24 hour stream. So I just put that on. Like if I'm doing whatever, I'll put it on. So I've seen all of Rick and Morty like 10 times already. Hmm. Yeah, I just, I, there's so much stuff that I haven't <sighs> seen that I just, I can't. There are some things where I'm like, I'll just watch that again. Like sometimes I'll just yeah. like, I'll, I'll watch like, uh, I can't even think of something right now, but like some some shows, I'll be like, I can watch an episode of that, and I'll find an episode and yeah. watch it. But I'm like, when eh. I, rewatches for me are more often than not a thing that I'm trying to do to get to sleep. Like it's a I need yeah. something. To, I, I'm not really like a casually rewatching things. If I am, and this is a sign to everybody out there listening, that means I'm probably in like a really bad mood. <laughs> Like if it's in the middle of the day and I'm rewatching Daredevil season two, you know that something has gone wrong. Something bad oh, well, has happened. They're not having um, any bad moods coming up because it's not going to be available yeah, on yeah. Netflix anymore. And it's never coming back for another season the way we knew it. I'm no, just, no. I'm yeah. No, all right. Just no. good. I'm glad we're all the same opinion. No, right no, now. no, Eric. Yeah. But what if? No, it's <laughs> never happening. I, I think. But what if a though? <laughs> I I think the thing is um they were never going to just like continue the show as it was even no. if it's a move to Hulu it would still have I, some sort of reset I don't on. think they needed to after season 3 No No I no, I, I, I get bring it, I bring, I, I get I, the decision of bringing back Charlie Cox like that is the smartest decision you could possibly yes. make like I agree It's Indeed, just it, it's just like those are the two you get, and you just implant them in Marvel, and it's fine. Like also, and I, I don't, I don't want to put down the dude because I know he has done other things. He's the only one who I feel hasn't moved on in a significant way. Well, he the loves that character too. It's like it's a thing of like, yeah. It, this is him what and he wants to both do. have baggage. Yeah. Well, yes. it's it's also um, Charlie Cox's buddies with a uh, uh, shit. Fuck. Andrew Garfield. No, the actor who plays Logan. Oh, um, yeah, he's also found oh, Andrew Garfield. There's yeah, a great Hiddleston. picture he's, of, he's of what Hiddleston and uh, no, and, of Charlie Cox and Andrew Garfield, and they're clearly drunk off their asses. Yes, and yeah. very young too. But yeah, I think I think him being buddies with Hiddleston definitely like gave him a bit more of an in back yeah. into the MCU because Hiddleston yeah. is a darling of Marvel, so they're yeah. gonna be like, oh, wait, right, well, you know, if you're buddies with him. I'm, well, I'm also I'm very curious to hear to to watch the uh, the sort of behind the scenes stuff for uh, No Way Home to see mm-hmm. what they because I was watching the um, I think it's called Assembled, which is like this mini series that Disney Plus has been doing. Yes, and I, I I got towards the end of the episode. I was like, they haven't talked about Kingpin yet, so they're probably saving him for towards the end. And they get to the point where they're talking about, like, well, we need a villain. We need somebody to be in charge of um, uh, the trench, not the trench coats, the uh, trash suit. Tr- tr- yeah. Um, track yeah. suit moth. Or not track suit moth. Yeah. 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 We need somebody to be in charge of the track suits. And according to them, what happened is Kevin looks at all of them over Zoom and he's like, what if it's, what if it's the Kingpin? Um, what if we bring back Vincent? And they all say, you want to bring back Vincent D'Onofrio. Um, and they were all stunned that he suggested it, um, which just that wording there tells you a lot if it's true. Um, and so I think that like, there's, there's an understanding that those shows have an impact and that some of those people um, are tied to the character. The mm-hmm. fact that the the first thing the other producers in the room said was you want to bring back Vincent D'Onofrio says so much um, that they weren't like, well, who do we get to play him? That would Michael that's Clark Duncan's say. dead. We it's can't bring him back. <laughs> um, and I, I imagine it's a similar thing with Charlie. Um, I think the real question is, who else from those shows have they had that conversation about? Who else have they thought of in brainstorms and said? Bernthal. Uh, well, I'm sure I'm sure it's come up, but I'm sure he's yeah. always like, it's not the right time. Yeah. Tabling Bernthal for a later conversation after stuff uh, has been settled. 
Um, yes. You know, are they having conversations where they're talking about, you know, say the Marvels? Are they ha- having those conversations and saying, should we bring in Jessica Jones? Um, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. You can go down the line. Are they having conversations about doing a new version of the Defenders and s- still bring back Luke for some reason? Um, or, you know, or in the, you know, and, and you can go on and on, you know, for they're definitely having this conversation about Finn Jones. There's no yes. way. Yeah. There's no yeah. way. No, no, no. no I think Colleen Wing, okay. They're not having conversations. Uh, they might be having, they might be having the conversation about Colleen Wing, especially after she basically put them on blast. I, I uh, could yeah. see, I could see them honestly like recasting Finn. Like, just be yeah. like, we're doing Iron Fist again, but it's not Finn Jones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. actually getting somebody who, you know, will learn how to do some of the martial arts. And or stuff like they could do, like, they can make him Asian. And I think that'd be pretty cool. That would be a really brave move. And it would <laughs> be a way to tie it into uh, Shang-Chi, too. Like, they could <laughs> say that somebody from from that village, like, ended up going and fighting the dragon. New Iron and, Fist in the comics, I think, is an Asian. I think so. Uh, yeah, he is. Yeah, he's he's of some Asian descent. I'm not sure which. Yeah, and Danny trained him essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it would it would be cool because I would love to see proper representation of Iron Fist, even if it's not Danny Rand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Do we uh, do we want to wrap this up? So the hunter can't be happy. Um, yeah, no, 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 dragons. no never, no never. I I can never have it. it it's yeah. it's it's a fleeting thought. Well, you got Moon Knight. I mean, it's not fucking enough. So like, yeah, that's, that's true. Let's, let's count our universe. blessings. Yeah, yeah. But Morbius is my monkey spot thing, though. Oh, it's like gosh. we'll give you a Moon Knight show, that but also not real. Uh, <laughs> Morbius isn't okay. real. Long live Paulo, though. Paulo. Speaking, Paulo. <laughs> real quick. Uh, speaking of things that uh, aren't real, but sadly they're talking about like they are. I saw an article briefly about uh, Craven the Hunter, and yeah. and. <laughs> Outside of the original cast or the actor cast in it, guess who else is Russell Crowe? Yep, I saw this. Yes, yeah, yeah. Right. Who's he going uh, to be? A lion? I'm, I'm wondering if he's going to be older version of Craven, and <laughs> and Aaron Taylor Johnson is going to be learning from him. I can uh, if that if they if it's good. I could be down for that. I could be, <laughs> yeah. It's Sony. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like thinking. He's got thinking, a point. Thinking about Russell Crowe dressed up as like the Craven from the early comics. I'm like, yes. yeah, that fits. Yeah, that works. Yeah. And that way they wouldn't have to have Aaron Taylor Johnson in that ridiculous goddamn Craven outfit. Right. What if yeah. Aaron Taylor Johnson is one of his sons? Okay. I mean, yeah. yeah. We don't know if he's like for real Craven. I mean, also that said, completely checks out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. I mean, I, I would imagine Craven the Hunter is sterile though, because he's been right. eating oh, the actor. He has so. like eight sons, and he keeps showing up in Spider-Man comics. And they're like, why the fuck? Do that you makes sense. Sense. <laughs> so crazy. Like, How do they grow so fast? I feel like Craven is fairly not equivalent, but similar in many ways to Slade. And Slade has like 15 sons or something. I know. I, I, I'd yeah. compare to Bane almost in some ways, but not yeah, really. But Bane, but Bane isn't prolific with the No, Slade. no. Bane, Bane doesn't right. fuck. Bane does not yeah. fuck. Well, the venom has but, made him sterile. Yeah, no, he's impotent. Probably. Probably. Like, <laughs> you joke, but I, probably I, I, think. I feel like every five years, somebody is like, let's give Slade another son. Just for the fun of it. Just for the hell of it. Slade fucks. Yeah. I don't like to think about that. Um, well, I do like, uh, I do like to think about the furry about convention. That's all I we have about now. Eric, really nobody furry? likes to think okay. about Slade. Nobody likes to think about Slade fucking because... Terra, you yeah, are exactly. Yes. Terra. So yeah, yeah. like yeah. Ugh. Yeah, ugh. thanks, Marv Wolfman, fucking pervert. Um, <laughs> yeah, do we want to? Do we want to wrap this up? Yeah, sure. It's, it's midnight. Yeah, yeah. We got to chit chat. I have nothing to plug except this show that I'm <laughs> on right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go us. Uh, you can listen to Comic Club though if you want. 
if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you it's, can do it like I do, and you listen to two episodes, then you don't listen for a month. Well, that's you because you're a bad friend. Anyway. <laughs> uh -huh. Hey, hey, hey Hunter, how many episodes of LAHP have you listened to, huh? Uh, I'm on them the most, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting, Hunter, um, outside of you uh, not being able to pronounce the name of the newest Pokemon game. Um, it's interesting <laughs> that we give you time to promote your uh, your little video game show yeah and i have i have not yet heard you promote phantom zone once i have actually promoted phantom zone on comic club a couple times He's like exactly last one. last two episodes i haven't heard you say shit when you're doing well, the plugs. because well, uh, mm, mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm, rushing, to I'm rushing through the plugs because uh -huh. we've talked an hour about world of warcraft <laughs> <laughs> that's usually what happens is i'm like okay well let's wrap this up and, and, and you wonder why i only listen to two episodes at a time and then uh, stop oh, Frank's uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> no here's the thing frank is great and uh that's why i do listen to as many episodes as i do um yeah uh speaking of podcasts that we're doing outside of the show uh lhp still doing episodes we just today Almost immediately before we started recording this, uh, we finally did the did the deed and uh, recorded "Die Another Day." So that yeah. Um, that yeah the, is "Die Another Day" off. the one with so the invisible car? The Bond movie, right? That's the Pierce Brosnan one. Yeah, that's the that's the fi the final Brosnan and the one that almost killed the movies for a couple years. There. Um, so yeah. Yeah, go listen to that when it's out. It should be, I'll probably be editing it uh, very quickly after this. So, uh, yeah, uh, that's that's happening. And uh, we're going to try and knock out the knock out the Craigs and then all kinds of other stuff's happening. Oscars, top 10 lists, uh, new season starting very soon. So, uh, yeah, hop on over there. Listen to listen to the back catalog. Don't listen to the first season that I constantly forget <laughs> featured a former host of this show. Um, uh, just, just, yeah, just don't listen to that. It's bad. It's not good show. Um, yeah. Um, anyways, that's my plug. Uh, I've been Eric Fedorchak. You can find me at, at Eric underscore Fedor. I was having a stroke there at Eric underscore Fedor on Instagram. Picture of dogs and food and cats and comics. I can't lift my left arm and my face is dumb. Um, you can also what? find me further on Phantom Zone. Uh, oh, yeah, things, go. things, not the other things. Um, you should also hound Hunter relentlessly for pronouncing it Arceus when it's Arceus. In um, Japan, in the original Japanese, it's pronounced Arceus. Yeah, that's great. But the American release, it's it's being well, be, well. Oh, 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 here oh, in race it. Oh, racist. <laughs> Uh, yep, racist. Yep, because I'm going off of what the fucking <laughs> Nintendo commercial told me. Um, I'm dying and, on this hill. <laughs> uh, and outside of that, remember that the shots are full of micro computers that are there to take over your mind. And also, Nikonic horseshoes I bred especially to have steel teeth that have the tensile strength of a katana. That's funny. Moon. Oh, bye. 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 bye.